How's it going you guys? So winter can be an absolutely brutal, awful few months. Whether you're a toy photographer or not, it is just brutal. So I want to show you a few ways how to really take advantage of that and make winter pretty awesome. So yeah, winter kind of sucks, and it just feels like it lasts forever, and it just gets dark early, uh, and it's just freezing cold, and you don't really have the same kind of normal landscape outside as usual, it's just kind of like snow all the time. I live in New York, so if you live in a place where it gets cold like here, you probably understand the struggle. If you live somewhere like I'm in California, and it's nice and warm all the time, well maybe, maybe not. You will love this video just to see all the cool different things we can do in the winter. There's so many awesome ideas I have, I can't wait to share with you guys. So the very first thing we have to do to take advantage of the winter and how cold it is and how dark it gets and we're just going to have to embrace that and use it to our advantage. So that means we can take a lot of really cool snow, ice, and cold themed characters from fandoms we love and put them outside in you know the snow and the ice and make them look awesome. So that means you know if you're a Star Wars fan we can use some Hoth inspired Star Wars stuff uh, if you're a Pokemon fan, there's, you can use some ice-type Pokemon. There's so much. If you're you're a Mortal Kombat fan, Sub-Zero is perfect for this kind of stuff. There's so many different things. These guys right here, hot hands or any kind of hand warmers. These guys, you just open them up, you get these little pouch thingies that stay warm. You put them in your pockets and you're good because you're going to be posing figures and doing all kinds of stuff while you're outside. These are my very first thing. I'm going to be using these the entire video. <laughs> I'm always having to time out my photos all the time, especially this time of year, and making sure I go in the right time of day, which can be really difficult because I work until like 5 p.m. and then at 5 p.m. it's dark. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a photo at night with a very snow-inspired thing, and it's going to be awesome. So what I did is I took this. There's this new figure from uh, Jazzwares, uh, this Articuno figure, which is actually really cool. The fact that we even have an Articuno figure like this that exists, so that's pretty cool. I went outside at night, and I set this guy up, and I took advantage of my icy surroundings to create this. One theme that I've kind of really loved to do with, with any Pokemon inspired photo is kind of have like this crazy awesome Pokemon making an entrance going like this and then Ash or Red is just kind of watching and you kind of see it from behind his perspective and he's like whoa! So that's what I wanted to do with Articuno so I set them all up in my little rock area I have at night and I use my loom cubes to make sure I have the correct lighting and I have these really cool gloves that I got for Christmas with little uh, lights on the end so I can see outside. I'll have that linked in the description. All of the gear that I'm going to be using in this video will be in the description as well. Uh, and then also my girlfriend bought me this portable like propane powered heater that I can bring outside with me and shoot uh, while I'm doing it. And it's the coolest thing ever. I'll have that linked in the description as well but still it really really helps with this kind of thing. And so I had them all set up and use a fast shutter speed. Even though I had all this light outside I had fast enough shutter speed. Took a little bit of snow and sprinkled it above on top of uh, Articuno and I got this shot. This shot was actually really tough. There's just so many factors in it that made it quite difficult to pull off. So I actually attempted this shot three separate nights at a time. I took it once, didn't like it. Took it again, didn't like it. And then the third time, I finally figured out exactly what I had to do and it worked. So that's one thing about toy photography that is really great. You're going to try and you might fail a couple times. You're going to shoot and you might not like what you do. But every time you do, you're going to learn something and you're going to get better as a photographer. You're going to grow as a photographer every single time. Don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to try something really hard. And if you do something and you screw up, don't get discouraged. Just try it again and I bet you you'll figure it out this time. So this next thing I'm going to recommend is actually really, really cool and I'm really happy that I thought of something like this. So I have a bunch of cool rocks in my yard and I wanted to make this really cool like icy wonderland, almost like a cool fortress of solitude looking thing with just icicles and stuff all over the place. I took my hose, hooked it up to my spigot, and then I brought it over to the rocks and I turned it on and I left it on for a few hours. <laughs> 
And actually it worked, ended up working best. If you have a hose with a few different nozzles on it, change it to the mist thing. Once you leave it on for a couple hours, especially when it's freezing cold outside, you'll get these really cool, amazing ice sculptures and awesome. It just makes this perfect little environment for toy photography, which is so cool. There's so many cool things you could do with this. So I ended up leaving the hose on overnight and it's really cold out. It's like five degrees out right now and it really did great. I put it on like a mist function on my hose and it just covered everything in ice. <laughs> Looks really cool. So I'm gonna take some really awesome ice themed photos going on right now. I'm really excited. It's gonna be awesome, but it's so cold. I will say it is a little bit difficult when you have all the ice out there. I mean, the surface is very slippery, so it's kind of hard to pose the figures. And it's also just freezing cold out there in general, so it does definitely hinder your your creativity a little bit because it's so dang cold. But it's so much fun, and it's it's cool to be able to find something like this that you can take advantage of when, you know, it's so cold and depressing outside. <laughs> One thing with this though I will keep in mind, make sure you're doing it somewhere completely safe. Anytime you're using water like this, it's going to go somewhere. So please make sure you're not doing it somewhere where it's going to go like into the road and cause all of this ice and people can slip on it and crash or something. Make sure the water's going somewhere. Make sure you do it somewhere safe and you think about where that water's going to go once it melts or whatever. So after I did the whole ice sculpture thing on the rocks, I kind of thought about it a little bit more and got a little bit inspired and I was like, what if I do the same thing with my hose, but I do it like on some figures? Will the ice sculptures and icicles form like on the figures themselves and make it look like they're frozen? The Iceman cometh! Uh, and so, yes, I did. I did that exact thing. <laughs> and it actually turned out really really cool like way cooler than I was expecting so basically what I did is I went outside and I took the figure set them up in some kind of cool pose put them on a rock <laughs> and I turned the hose on on the mist mode and then the whole entire environment and area including the figure just totally iced up and they were ended up being like frozen in time and oh my gosh it was so they're so cool like the coolest thing ever makes me want to try this again it looked like Sub-Zero froze them basically <laughs> So I woke up bright and early so I could get some nice early morning lighting for the for the photos and so the light could kind of shine through the ice and that would look really cool and I did that. It was pretty difficult. I will say shooting figures that are frozen in ice is a little bit different than figures that are not frozen at all. <laughs> but it was so cool. Just the fact that I was able to pull that off was just so much fun. So that's definitely something I would recommend as well. So much fun. So much fun. Also, make sure you're using figures that you don't really love too much. These figures that I used ended up being just fine, but I was still a little bit afraid that, I don't know, the ice would get into the joints and expand or screw something up, but they ended up being okay. But I would just say keep that in mind just as you never know. You don't want to destroy a figure when you're doing this. You never want to destroy a figure. So uh, another really great thing I want to recommend is if you have any spots with water or rivers or creeks or any kind of little water structure or something near you that you would usually go to for toy photos during the summer or something, try going there in the winter. Chances are that thing has already completely frozen and look really cool and get some really cool inspiration and opportunities for some really cool photos. So I had this local river near me and then a park with an entrance to that river and I went there on a freezing cold day just to see what it would look like and it actually was really fun and I went during the morning too when it was very sunny so I can get some great lighting. So I was expecting to see all kinds of cool ice structures here by the water, but I was definitely not expecting to see something like this. Look at that. What the hell? That's so crazy. It's like the ice froze. Oh my 
over and there's just like this layer of nothing underneath the ice. That is so crazy. Look at all the, look at, look at, um, this, this is underwater. That is insane. So I've got this big slab of ice here. There's a lot of that. I'm just gonna kind of smash it behind Sub-Zero with my shutter going off with my remote and see if I get some cool exploding ice. I have no idea what I'm doing, it's freezing. But uh, I'm kind of having fun just experimenting with all this cool ice and just whatever is going on out here. So let's give it a shot. So staying warm out here is obviously incredibly important. And so that's why I'm wearing something from Western Rise, which is this video sponsor. So thank you, Western Rise. So this right here, this is the Airloft shirt jacket. All I'm wearing right now is this. I have a hoodie underneath, but I'm literally in two, it's two degrees outside and I'm pretty good. I got my pockets lined with my hand warmers and I'm all set. Uh, to take toy photos in two degree weather by the cool ice, <laughs> which is really cool. Plus the best part about this thing is it actually looks pretty cool. You know, I feel and I look pretty cool. I absolutely love this, this Airloft shirt jacket. So Western Rise, <laughs> thank you so much. And obviously I'm getting some great use out of this thing. And so, yeah, thanks Western Rise. <laughs> One thing about this jacket that I just noticed, I didn't even realize, check this out, ready? I have a secret pocket for my loom cubes. It's perfect for my Panel Pro. That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm gonna use this all the time. So make sure to head over to westernrise.com. Get yourself something real nice. <laughs> Thank you, Western Rise. So coming to a place like this, this time of year, it really is so cool. There's so many possibilities for things. Like this is just so cool. I, I wish I brought more figures. I totally could have figured out something with this, but. Um, Honestly, with the figures I brought, I don't think it would have worked, but there's so many possibilities for something like this. Just like all this cool ice and the red clay. Oh, that's awesome. Over here, there's cool stuff. Look at all this cool ice in there. Ice in there. There's so many cool things to do. But this little ice area right here looks actually kind of cool, and I think I'm gonna do something with this. And I brought some fireworks. <laughs> So I'm going to try and figure something out in this little cave with a firework. So here's my little setup going on right here. I used a stick to keep them up because I didn't bring any wire. <laughs> um, and it's pretty dark over in this area, so the firework is going to work really well. So it's going to pop out. If it was too bright in the sunlight out here, then it would just look like a bunch of smoke and been totally washed out. So this is kind of a perfect area for it. My posing is definitely not as good as usual. I'm going to say that because the coldness is kind of stopping me from doing things I normally could. Plus his joints are really stiff because it's so cold out here. But um, I'm gonna go for it, take the photo. Let's do it. Fast shutter speed. When it's the winter time and you're kind of stuck inside, it can get kind of depressing. So just go out there, have some fun. And if you got snow all over the place, you can take some really cool snow inspired snowing shots with figures that you love. There's so many great opportunities for awesome toy photos in the winter, no matter what kind of toy photographer you might be. So, so I really hope if you're a toy photographer like me, you take this to your advantage. And then all the people living in the warm areas get all jealous of the cool snow we have, even though we're freezing over here. <laughs> But I would absolutely love to see what ideas you have in the winter as well. Please let me know in the comments below what are some awesome things you do in the winter as well so you can inspire me, inspire everyone else in the comments as well. But uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.